pretty bad at <laughs> If the dog can't get your leg or arm, it's gonna go for wherever it can get a solid bite. Hi, I'm Terry Adams, and this is Tiny, nine-year-old Belgian Malinois. She has trained dual-purpose dog, trained in tracking, detection for narcotics, and apprehension. I am a eight-year Army dog handler with also 10 years of civilian handling and instructing experience. Today, we'll be looking at military dogs in movies and TV and judge how real they are. Look left. Cerberus left. Really, honestly, it's pretty spot on. The only thing that would be different would be, in my experience, is directing the dog with a laser versus letting them free sniff. You know, the dog being able to climb the ladder and hop into the, into the window and then search from there with direction, all that's realistic. Yeah, he's got something. That is totally realistic. If the dog is sent in to a building and sees a threat, then the job of the dog is to apprehend. The dog does target the arm. We do train them for, to apprehend from the arm and, and the leg. The things that we use are gonna be a hidden sleeve. In this scene, the subject is actually using a hidden sleeve. That's how he's taking that bite without actually being bitten. Check here. I found him. Two bodies. When it comes to tracking a, a, a scent, a dog is awesome, especially in the, in the conditions that they were in. The canopy uh, holds a lot of odor, which makes it even easier for dogs to, to track. When it comes to my military experience, we have tracked more or less not insurgents, but we track more um, explosives, from the source of the explosive to maybe where someone is sitting ready to ambush. So yes, you can use clothing to, to search for a familiar smell for the dog. It doesn't have to be a living person, it can also be a, a dead person as well. I definitely give it a 10 out of 10. Some of the things, uh, if you notice that the dogs are targeting the arms and legs, you see that there's some stomach shots. So, you know, if the dog can't get to the arm or leg, then they're gonna go for another area for sure. You see the two Belgian Malinois being worked together. The Belgian Malinois is, is an awesome dog. Before the Shepherd was the go-to dog, now the Belgian Malinois has replaced the Shepherd. Based off of speed, stamina, size, they're not as big as the Shepherd would be. Pretty bad. <laughs> but this is not as common um, to teach. But once again, if the dog can't get your leg or arm, it's gonna go for wherever it can get a solid bite. <laughs> Scaling the wall to bite the subject is very realistic. In the military, it wouldn't be so realistic, only because if we had a threat up high, we would just neutralize that threat. But if we wanted to get a dog up high, that is a possibility. You see a lot of crossfire from a lot of the uh, good guys and the bad guys. The dogs probably wouldn't have last very long in the real world. Um, probably within, after the first or maybe second bite, they would have been shot by someone. Realistically, we wouldn't put our dogs freely in danger of a lot of that. They'll be sent to a specific target and then brought back to us to make sure that we're not getting any crossfire. These dogs are really desensitized to gunfire. Would have been also great to, have, to watch them have ear and eye pro based off of the new technology that's provided today. I'm gonna to give that a seven out of 10. There's a lot of shooting going on and normally a handler isn't gonna put their dog in harm's way of that many guns. Oh, and Dennis, can you pull out some of your people for us? Confuses the dog's nose. They're searching a, a building, they have everyone leave. Normally we would not necessarily detain everyone, but we would isolate everyone to a certain area. So then that way we know no one's physically going to harm us as we search the building or try to figure out a way to throw the dog off 
as we're doing it. This is a DEA dog and they're looking for meth narcotic. The handling from the handler wasn't all that great. He did a lot of touching stuff. <laughs> in the real world, especially in the civilian world, a, a little more than military, it's a big liability to sit there and touch the objects that you're wanting the dog to, to search because you can cause the dog to give a false indication. You want to minimize as much as possible your manipulation of the dog. So when conducting a, a building search, we would let the dog free search. Then we will come th back and detail. When we detail, we would stay off of the object, but point towards where we want the dog to search. How long we gotta be quiet down here? They're gone. We're good. So here we see the dog doesn't indicate on possible narcotics. It just means that the dog wasn't in the best area uh, for a sniff. Now, with the narcotics being a floor under, the dogs can catch the odor with it being a floor under, but it would have to be in a productive space, which are areas where odor collects, and the dog can then track it to source. We'll give that handler a, a three out of 10 for his, uh, his handling skills. <laughs> hey, kid, stop! <laughs> The dog is barking. That can be a sign of the dog having odor to a explosive. We, we like calm, a little bit calmer alerts when it comes to explosives, just because of uh, how volatile they are. And with something like that, that's that it's either a mine or an IED, right? An improvised explosive. We don't want to do anything that can trigger that explosive to go off. Most times, our indicators are going to be a down or a sit instead of a barking just because we want that calm behavior. And based off of the placement of the odor is how they indicate. So if, if it's something that's lower to the ground, they will perform a down. If it was something that was higher up into a ceiling or, or high placed into a wall, they're doing a sit. Seek, Dex. Seek. Come here. Seek. a boy. Seek. You see that the handler says to the dog to go seek. Uh, it is a common word, Zeke, Zook, find it. These are all common words that are, that are used throughout the military and civilian to go and search for an odor. Find it. What is that? You see that there's a Labrador this is a common choice of breed for an explosive detection dog. The reason why they make really good explosive detection dogs are one, nice in nature, um, very high, high driven, very good at, at hunting odors, rather if that's an explosive, narcotics, or even a bird. The handling of the dog would have been different, definitely. The dog would have been a little further out from the handler. Most of these dogs are used to clear routes where there were old minefields or just routes that are known for insurgents to place IEDs. We would want the dog to be a good distance so that we can save the handler just in case the dog trips the explosive. All right, good boy, good boy, no booms. No booms, good dog. Words of encouragement are, are a big thing for dogs. In these situations, you're not able to reward the dog physically with a tug or, or a ball, some sort of toy. When we train these dogs, we teach these dogs that explosives or narcotics equal this big reward, this toy. And so that's why they are so willing and eager to go out and, and find these explosives. In this scene, you see that the dog is a little bit more vocal. It's not a deal breaker. Uh, Biggest thing is we understand that these dogs are working off a of motivation of a toy, which is what causes the frustration, and that's where you get those barks from. I would give it an eight out of 10. The reason for not having a 10 out of 10 is based off of the handling of the dog. Found something! 
Good boy. The way she's utilizing the dog is all correct. We didn't necessarily use flags. We used chem lights though. If we did do a flag, it was a makeshift flag out of rocks and reflective tape where we would just drop it at a known area of interest. And we use the chem light to mark how far from said IED. Clear. Levy, check the vehicle. I've actually been in a situation similar to this without the explosion. My dog passed an IED uh, because of the wind current. We were traveling north to south and the wind current was going north to south. So with the odor being pushed past us, it might, and me and my dog actually walked right over a, an IED. My dog caught it about 50 yards and he picked it up going back. But the IED was rigged for MRAPs and our little weight wasn't big enough to trigger it, but we could have definitely been in a situation like that. Megan Levy and her dog partner were wounded from an IED. The military uses dogs commonly for this reason to be able to protect soldiers from being hurt or, or killed, which is why, one of the reasons why we train the dog to work at a greater distance from us. She was a little bit on the luckier side. Uh, based off my experience, I have lost a dog from an IED. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 uh, based off the equipment, based off of the situation itself. You remember me? It's your favorite chew toy from 2015. A lot of the military working dogs are fairly temperamental. I definitely have a few bites on me currently from dogs when I was in the service that going in leashing them and they decided to go ahead and bite me. So we, we, we do use muzzles quite a bit for more aggressive dogs. Typically in the beginning when you first meet your dog, you're not meeting them with a, with a muzzle on. Just because of the establishment of, of a bond, we don't want to stress the dog out with having a muzzle on. Now if it's a very high risk dog, then yes, we would put a muzzle on just because we know that that particular dog is more than likely going to bite you. And you're gonna go on a little road trip, 1,500 miles, just to act like your daddy's looking down on us from above. As the handler approaches this dog, he approaches slowly. We would wanna approach a little bit more confidently just to show the dog that we're not giving off any fear so the dog doesn't take advantage. The voice, the way he's speaking to the dog is all correct. We don't wanna come in with a, a harsh tone but we also don't want to come in with a passive tone as well. We want to come in with a confident, inviting tone. All right, I'm gonna leash you up. All right. Be cool. He gets down to the dog's level. Wouldn't necessarily get down to the dog's level as in face to face, only because that's a very big, big risk. But also we don't want to come in and hover the dog as a dominant and showing a dominance play. Realistically, he could do this, but he would put himself into more of a, a dangerous situation with having a dog right in his face. What are y'all so scared of? She's mellowed out big time. <laughs> hey man, I forgot to tell you not to touch her on the ears, man. I left that part out. Most dogs don't really care about their ears. It's just every dog has its own trigger. It could be its paws, it could be leg, rubbing the side of them. Uh, putting your hand over their head, and this particular dog had, its trigger was its ears. And we weaned her off the Prozac so she might get moody from time to time. This dog's on Prozac for PTSD. You have some that, that when they retire, totally normal, uh, regular, they, they can turn into a, really turn into a pet, uh, a household pet. My last military working dog, he actually went to a home and as a retirement, a home with kids, and he's been doing great. This particular dog is suffering from PTSD and anxiety um, based off of its military experience and based off of the loss of its handler as well. Rating-wise for this scene, I'm gonna give a 10 out of 10. Uh, it's very realistic for a dog with PTSD to and, and aggression issues and with a trigger 
of uh, he touching the ears. No, no, let's go. It wouldn't really be realistic to send a dog on another dog. One, because we don't train that. Because it would be more of a distraction, especially when it comes to military working dogs. And and even as, as law enforcement, they wouldn't want that. With the dog not having training to do that, this would be more of a natural reaction versus training. You're okay, you're okay. With Sam being a German Shepherd, it, it is fairly common for a protection dog. Dog is, is very loyal, it is a great protector, and it is a dog that will give his life to protect you. This scene, I would rate a three out of 10. Really, we, we would never send a dog on another dog. Okay, Max, go search. It is an option to have the dog search free of handler. One of the things with that is you do take a, a big risk because you do have, like you had the kid with the ball, behind a corner, you know, you, there's a little bit less control. So normally you'll see a, a dog on a, on a very long line, like 30 to 50 feet worth of a line to be able to control a little bit better just in case you do have that, kind of, that sort of situation. <laughs> you see the dog, he's, he indicates on the weapons. Uh, that's very common. With an explosive dog, we do teach it black powder, which is in most weapons, um, and smokeless powder, which is in weapons as well. He probably missed that guy that was around the corner because he was overwhelmed from the odor of the, uh, the weapons that were down there. My rating for this, for Max, is definitely going to be a 10 out of 10. There, everybody has their way of searching, and that's one of the techniques, and he performed it very well. Based off of the clips that we watched today, my favorite scene is going to be the John Wick. We don't see that particular style happening um, with all that action, but it's, it's amazing to watch those dogs. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, fetch the next video for another.